Irish women's team. Amazing. I, I heard Lisa in the Aviva not so long ago at a men's match and the atmosphere she created with that was unbelievable and it was exactly the same here tonight at Tala. It's great to have her sing the national anthem here. There is the team. Will that be the team in two weeks' time? Courtney Brosnan and goal, of course, that familiar back three. Uh, the two newcomers, uh, Sinead Farrelly and Marisa Shiva, making their home debuts here after uh, coming on in the American visit not so long ago. Familiar names, 100 plus caps for Nia Fahey and Louise Quinn at the back. Terrific lineup for Vera Pau tonight. Yeah, it's a good lineup. I think the only kind of question mark was with Megan Campbell out on that left side of centre back and um, who would go in. And Megan Connolly obviously has slotted in there before, and we see her slot in there as well. And Rusha Little John coming into midfield where we've seen her play a really good part in the team, too. Here is the French team. Uh, just look at the experience there. Renard. 145 caps tonight, 34 goals, captaining the team from the back. And front, Eugénie Le Zomer, 178 caps, 88 goals, averaging a goal every other game for France. This is quality writ large. Yeah, it is. It's a great, a great team. And you say Le Zomer coming back in, one of those players who really was left out under the Accra. She's come back in and she's she scored two goals in, in uh, Renard's first game as well. So, look, they're stacked with, with pace. They will look to show lots of energy and pace in midfield and get forward. They'll press high from the from the top as well. And look, they're going to give her on the difficult game tonight, but it's exactly what we want in preparation for that game against Australia. They are a team of, of such quality, France. Beat Colombia, beat Canada in their two matches under Hervé Renard. They went out the semi-final of the Euros to Germany. 2-1, two, two goals by Alex Pop. And, of course, in the World Cup, in, which was in France in 2019, uh, they got as far as the quarter-final, where they went out the penalty shootout to the Germans. So it is quality, really top drawer international opposition for Ireland tonight. Yeah, and, of course, as Carol mentioned as well, France are coming here looking to try and get themselves set up as well. They've yet to go past the semi-final at a World Cup, so they'll be looking to try and push there, you know, and they'll be trying to put their mark on the team tonight and really show their manager that they want to be in the starting 11 for their team in the World Cup too. So it's going to be an interesting game, George. Ranked five in the world against the team ranked 22nd. France kick off, a match refereed by a, an English, Kirsty Dahl, who took charge of the English Women's FA Cup final last year. That wind is behind Ireland in the first half. It's Nia Fahey for Heather Payne and Sinead Farrelly's first touch on Irish soil. And back from Fahey to Brosnan. And steadiness from the Everton goalkeeper. And looking for Carusa. Katie McCabe's first involvement. The challenge there by Lacroix. And the French fullback has come away with the ball. Uh, that was Diani, and uh, this is now Toletti, and back with Renard, the formidable figure at the heart of the French defence. This is Kachaoui. Back once more to Cascarino, Estelle Cascarino, whose sister Delphine, twin sister, missing from the World Cup with an ACL injury. And she's a striker and a goal scorer. Yeah. Estelle is a Manchester United player and plays here at the heart of the defence. Yeah, they have had their injuries as well. Katoto, another player missing out through an ACL injury. Two very, very exciting players. But as you mentioned before, they're a, they're a team stacked with lots of talent. This girl here coming on the ball, Diani, is going to be a big threat tonight. She's shown in a previous tournaments. We've seen her in the Euros last year how good she can be. Gayoro in midfield as well is going to show a lot tonight, I'm sure. Ball with Katie McCabe. We're missing, of course, the... The regular left wing thrower in her, <laughs> Megan Campbell. Yeah, and what a throw that is. <laughs> Farrelly looking for the run of Payne. What a pass! Heather Payne. Looking for McCabe. That's a bit loose and it's given the possession away to Diani. Yeah, it's good positive play from Ireland as well. You can see the, the bodies were rushing forward. They weren't holding back. They're happy to go forward and try and get into play. It's a good uh, switch of play from Shiva out to Payne, who we know. It's going to work hard up and down that right-hand side, but good play from Ireland, just a, a little bit of a, a misplaced pass from Heather Payne in the end. French started up again with Toletti. Toletti wants more. 
fulfilling that uh, kind of shielding number six role that uh, Amandine Henri, uh, the captain of the World Cup, that's World Cup, has filled. But then she fell foul of the former coach, and she hasn't played for France uh, back at the squad for the first time in over two years. That's Farley. Offside flag goes up, though, against Caruso. Yeah, again, a good play. I think we, we spoke about it. Um, Caruso up front now, she's that player who we're trying to find, trying to get the ball to feet and let her hold it up and get her, her pacey wingers forward. But just that time, she just strays offside. Again, good play from Ireland, good positive play. Renard starts it up once more. Lacra, dispossessed by McCabe. And the throw-in is awarded the other way. And Katie chancing her arm there. It's the right thing to do. <laughs> Her challenge forced the throw. It's a great line at half time when the Saudis were playing Argentina. He said, You can go out the second half, take selfies with Messi, or you can do your very best. This is the World Cup. We know what happened. Yeah, exactly. What a result that was for them. I don't think anyone speaks about the two games after that that they lost, really, do they? It's, it's just that game against Argentina, and I suppose they gave them the fuel to, to push forward and go on and win it as well. Well, he's shown himself to be a man who's, who's capable. He certainly. Doing that with Saudi Arabia was, was quite an achievement, and of course he's, he's been all around the world managing. And a man who's, who's brought, uh, I think you could say, a, a sense of togetherness about this squad that was maybe lacking in the latter days of the previous coaches' campaign. Yeah, definitely, and I think you, you don't want to see that. I think we, we've seen, I think the first time I really thought about it was when Les Omer was lent, left out, obviously the all-time leading goal scorer. Um, you mentioned Amadi and Ronnery as well, so the Accra kind of made a few kind of questionable decisions, but she still had the quality of player to be able to get results. But um, yeah, I think uh, Renard coming in here, he's, he's got a job to get this squad back together and really get them in place for the World Cup. Throw from the right back, Lacrar. McCabe in to win it back, and there's O'Sullivan and Farrelly. Good to get it out of her feet and away, and back with Brosnan. Taking advantage of the wind. And an awkward one for Cascarino to deal with. Caruso's with her. Cascarino finding Toletti. And off to Renard. Two Renards, the coach, the captain, but they're not related. And McCabe in the right place to break up that attack. She just lost her balance in the end. It's unfortunate, but assistance from Shiva. And McCabe back on her feet. And it's Carusa. And Renard takes no prisoners. France get the ball back, but O'Sullivan's in the right place. And then it's Little John. Connolly uh, looking for Payne. Basha bustling through. Kachawi. And then Gioro. Giero picking out Dali, so comfortable in possession. Cash Cash we Toletti and Cascarino switching the play to Lacrar. It's altogether too long, and Brosnan is there. Yeah, Shiva does well there as well. She doesn't get them chance to settle on the ball forces her into a pass and, and thankfully it goes into the arms of Courtney Rosen but we can see when France get on the ball they have got players who are capable of breaking us down it's important that Ireland get back into shape really quickly which they have done so every time they've got on the ball you have to say uh, as a, a friendly international this is quite an atmosphere isn't there it's really on edge Tala boiling expecting yeah definitely I think as we've we seen against Zambia it was a different type of game because there was a lot of, of nerves in terms of who's going to get into the squad who's going to get picked but now we see a settled squad we see who we think is probably going to be the starting 11 all going well tonight in Australia so it's about them getting into their rhythm here tonight and really just trying to get themselves in a good place going to Australia throw this time is to Ireland McCabe with the throw. Carusa. Yeah, managed to keep it alive. They've done well to get out of that. A little bit of a problem. Louise Quinn. 
Cut off for Nifahi. O'Sullivan. That's got to be throw-in, says the referee. Uh, Denise O'Sullivan was looking for a push and a, a free kick, but no. Yeah, Denise done well in the end. I think you could see um, Basho was on her straight away. And you can see even when Nifahi gets the ball there, we know how good Denise is on the ball. So she trusts her and gives it into her. But the French players were on her straight away. Farley goes down. Again, the referee says uh, no foul. First touch for the French goalkeeper, Pauline Petro Magna. As the World Cup and goalkeeper for France. Kashari. Renard, who plays her football for Lyon, of course, the dominant force in uh, women's Champions League football for so many years. And she's been at the heart of it. Yeah, she's got some record, hasn't she? She's an excellent player. I think one thing that she is missing is a is a major tournament with, with France, you know. I think that'll be one thing she'll be looking to try and get to this World Cup, really try and push her team forward. And as I said, they've, they've yet to get beyond the semi-final stage, so I'm sure she'll be looking to try and help her team forward because she's won pretty much everything else there is to win in women's football. She turns 33 on the day that Ireland play Australia. There we go. As I said, it's just a, an unbelievable talent. I think Karen mentioned beforehand, we have our own Louise Quinn and how much of a threat she is from set pieces. And Renard is, is one of those players as well. She's got a rake of goals as well. I think she's seventh top goal or in the top goal scoring list for France as well as a, as a central defender. It's, it's some doing, is it? 34 goals. Be happy with that myself, George. Oh, just, <laughs> took the words right out of my mouth. Heather Payne with the throw, Denise O'Sullivan holding off the challenge of Kashawi, uh, and this time getting the free kick. It's brilliant from Denise O'Sullivan, she's so strong, you look at her and you think that she's a small player, but she's just got a, a low centre of gravity, she holds players off with ease. Does well to win a free kick. It's a word for uh, Selma Basha. She's had a few little goes at Denise O'Sullivan already, hasn't she? I think it's just reminding her that she was making use of herself at the throw-in as well, and that's just what the referee saying, mind yourself, I do have the cards with me. <laughs> Farrelly, lovely little touch on, and on goes Carusa. Offside flag goes up, and that's a close call. That won't count, sadly, but that was wonderful play by Sinead Farrelly. Uh, what a leap. Yeah, she done really well to get a touch on it, didn't she? I think when you see them going back, you can hear the, the crowd kind of getting a little bit of a lull because it's gone backwards, but it's, it worked well. She She's looks onside. onside. She's, She's onside. onside, isn't she? She is. That should have been 1-0. It's a good finish as well. It's a brilliant flick on. You can see, you're not sure if she kind of got onto it, but she gets a great little touch on it. And that's unfortunate from an Ireland point of view. It's a, it's a good goal. It looks onside to us here, George. I suppose the French goalkeeper would say the whistle had gone and didn't try. But my goodness, that, that was wonderful by Sinead Farrelly and the combination with Carusa. There is a way through. Yeah, definitely. I think it looked like it was well worked as well. You see the ball going back to, to Courtney Brosnan and then gets a good ball forward. And as you say, you can see Sinead Farrelly is backtracking to try and get on and gets a great little flick on it. And that's, as I said, it's unfortunate because that was a, a clear goal to me. And here's Shiva for Farrelly. Payne around the outside. This is Heather Payne at pace. Payne's cross, Carusa's in there. Oh, went through Carusa. Unfortunately for France, it reached Toletti, and they can counter attack. And Louise Quinn to the rescue, but she's a little bit loose one there. But the assistance is from Little John. This is very encouraging the way they get themselves back into shape. It's brilliant, and it's really good cover from Little John. You can see she senses the danger as Louise takes a little bit of a heavy touch. She gets into cover, but really good play going forward from Ireland. Brosnan under a bit of pressure throw into France and again as I mentioned that's it that's the danger with France as well when you do go forward you have to get your bodies back into position and make sure you have that cover Arusha Little John done really well there to get back and help her defence out Toletti away to Cascarino Cacciawi 
We have a full back, Lacrar. Pass Shiva. But not past Katie McCabe. Little John's there, and McCabe, ball stayed in play. Carusa trying to find some pace off Cascarino. That's for Carusa. Continuing the run is Denise O'Sullivan. Carusa, dive for time by Cascarino. And uh, that will be a card for the defender. Took one for the team, Estelle Cascarino. Yeah, it's brilliant centre for a play from Carusa as well. You can see she goes to go out to the right hand side and she just takes the defender Cascarino with her and she finds that little bit of space. Brilliant from Rusha Little John to keep the ball in play. And as I said, really good centre for a play from Carusa. Just waiting for that touch, wasn't she? Yep. And uh, that has ended the Irish attack, but has uh, brought a yellow card for Estelle Cascarino. Interesting uh, when you hear the name, of course, you think of Tony. And Tony did, in fact, play in France. and. The Cascarino twins feel it important uh, when uh, they're approached about it to make the point that no, we're not in at all related to Tony Cascarino, but we do share the name. Yeah, it's the automatic thing to think, isn't it? I think I've, I've had several people in, in the men's game ask me, are you a relation to them? But, uh, but no, no relation whatsoever. See Katie McCabe getting the, down, getting treatment. He's just caught her foot. Did she just a little bit of a stamp on her? Oh, oh. No, maybe not. Don't doesn't look it good, does it? Hopefully it's nothing too serious. It uh, seems as if something caught there. No concern for Vera Pau. I mean, Katie McCabe. Yeah, it's never it's never good to see a player go down when they're not. I thought possibly she might have got a little bit of a, a stamp on her foot after she played the pass there, but hopefully Katie gets up now and it's all okay. Well, the medical people will be considering this and uh, will be suggesting maybe as a precautionary measure uh, she might make an exit at this stage given given the importance of what's ahead two weeks down the line yeah definitely and you have young Izzy Atkinson on the bench as well as a, as a replacement I imagine and um, she could be one that could come in but again you don't want to see Katie McCabe on the ground no so hopefully everything's okay well, she, she looks in no kind of distress at all, uh, which must be a positive sign. Yeah, exactly. It's just, as we said, the way she went down, it just seemed a little bit innocuous, didn't it? Yeah. Meanwhile, let's have a look at this again. Now, watch Heather Payne, uh, watch uh, Caruso, rather, in the middle. And she's they, onside, she's isn't onside. she? She's onside. You can tell by the, uh, the stripe on the grass that she is not the last player back. Look, the French defender is further back than Caruso was. Yeah, that's, that's very unfortunate, I think. I mentioned before, we didn't get that bit of look in the USA with some of the chances we had, and it's gone against us again there. And no VAR, of course. Just when you really want it. <laughs> Free kick coming from Connolly. Defended by Kachawi. Uh, referee signals a goal kick. Fahi doing the, the Louise Quinn effort at the back post, but not really getting a clean head on it. Yeah, I think the defender does well just to put her off just enough, doesn't she? But it's been a good start for Marlon. I think they've started the better team here. It's been positive play in forward areas and defensively they, they've done really well to get into their shape at times too. Toletti for Karchawi. Challenged by Payne. Gioro. Soletti, Gioro, and off for Lacrar. It's Diani. And Le Sommer, oh, Quinn got there ahead of her. And McCabe got an important touch. Obviously, whatever was ailing her has been nothing too serious. Back with Gioro, menacing from France. Pasha. Toletti, and they'll try again with Cascarino stepping out of defence. And McCabe in the way to snuff that out. It was a strange ball from Cascarino, wasn't it? She just kind of clipped it forward, really didn't really need to. It was a bit unnecessary ball. Fahey in control. And then Denise O'Sullivan effecting the clearance towards Carusa, who's challenged by Renard. And the ball is out for an Irish throw. Yeah, it's a good play again from Carusa. She just gets herself in front of Renard and just gets her to head it out of play. But as you say, it's good to see Katie McCabe moving freely now as well after that. A little bit of a scare for us there. <laughs> a 
Arusa. And, uh, Lacroix having to go and retrieve. Still that wind whipping in from left to right from the Dublin Mountains. Kashawi. Giro for Kashawi. Farrelly with her. Giro once more. Short one for Dali. And away for Cascarino and off to Renau. Oh, a little bit of a misunderstanding there. Renau and Lacrar giving Ireland the throw. And McCabe trying to get Caruso in round the back. She's in behind Renard, but she's all alone at the moment. Reinforcements arriving. There's one of them, Shiva. Just wasn't quite the ball for Marissa Shiva. But again, Ireland in behind the French cover. Yeah, it's a good play again. Ireland being very direct, trying to find Caruso as early as possible. And you can see there's bodies trying to get into the box to show that support too. But uh, Ireland really putting it into, into the French here. You can see they're a little bit unsettled. It's been a very good start. Cascarino. Cachaoui. Cascarino. And Cascarino suggesting to her captain she gets it forward. Right? Had enough of this knocking it around the back. O'Sullivan just deceived there by Gaoro. Cachaoui. Diani, challenged by Farrelly, Farrelly again, and out off O'Sullivan, it's a throw to France. It's Renard. Cascarino. Kashawi. Now, that pass tells you uh, the effect Ireland are having on France. Yeah, they just look a little bit, um, as I said, unsettled already, a little bit of frustration, as you said, Cascarino telling Renard to get the ball forward, but they're just not finding those gaps. We've yet to see Les America on the ball at all. That's a very good point. Yeah, we've spoke about how dangerous she is. Now, she is a player who can do something out of nothing as well, so I don't want to speak too soon, George, but we've we've definitely kept her quiet and yet to see her, as I said, touch the ball, yeah. Fahi. And Payne bundled off it by Kashawi. Kashawi. Retaining the possession really well. The support from the other fullback, Lacrar. And that's towards Le Samer, but Brosnan's in control. Good hands from Courtney Brosnan. McCabe, Shiva. And McCabe, Shiva and McCabe again. Challenged by Renard and the assistant puts the flag up and points towards the square. It's Ireland's ball. Yeah, you can see Renard getting dragged in there as well. She's getting frustrated. She wants to get on the ball. She wants to try and make things happen. She's trying to win it back for her team, but it goes in favour of Ireland. Carusa did well. Shiva, pain on the right. Oh, and Shiva. <laughs> she's fast, George, but she's not that fast. <laughs> <laughs> Marissa Shiva knew as soon as she hit it, she did it too hard. It's <laughs> new Fahey. That's come nicely for Farrelly. Back for Fahi once more. It's a corner. Fahi came in the corner. And uh, the assistant has given it. Yeah, it's a good play. Uh, I think Shiva had the right idea trying to find Heather Payne out this right-hand side. It seems to be a tactic they're using, getting our wing-backs forward when they can. Um, but we have got a corner from it in the end. It's a good play from the Fahi. And this, of course, is Fahi stretching to make the contact, which turned out to be positive from Ireland's point of view this of course is the moment that you expect to see her and of course Louise Quinn in the box and that is where the pair of them are to attack this corner kick from Katie McCabe yeah I think set piece is so important for Ireland as well we know how good Katie's delivery can be and as you mentioned Louise Quinn 
And Nifahi in there amongst the other players to try and get their heads on it. Well, we mentioned Renard as a goal-scoring centre-back. Louise Quinn is certainly that. 15 goals in her career for Ireland. And waiting for the delivery from Katie McCabe. Uh, didn't quite make it, but stuck in the breeze. It's Farrelly chasing back as Gayoro breaks free. Lacrar. Yeah, it was just a little bit of a floaty delivery, it wasn't. We spoke about the wind here in Tallah Stadium, but it is very, very strong. You just see it got caught in it there. Kashawi. Toletti. Brosnan thought about coming. Connolly taking control. Kashawi. Oh, dispossessed by O'Sullivan. And off goes Shiva. And Shiva's got the pace here to trouble Cascarino. And Caruso, she out. No, the flag has gone up again. I think she might have just been off there. I'm not sure if. I wasn't sure if Shiva or Caruso were going to go for that original ball from Denise O'Sullivan, but Shiva just seemed to pick it up again and just found that extra bit of pace or great pace to get onto the ball we can see she did just yeah. think just off wasn't she in, in, in all fairness as the man said yeah. she was offside <laughs> she wasn't offside in the first one but she was on that one Kashawi <laughs> it's for now well, this uh, first 25 minutes almost has, has really flown by and uh, it's it's encouraging to report that it's, it's been a better 25 minutes for Ireland than France. Yeah, it's been brilliant so far, as I said, Ireland had the better opportunities, had the ball in the back of the net, which we think should have counted. They've set themselves out really well so far. Brosnan has come for this, oh dear. Open goal and it's a side net. They got away with that one, Bacha couldn't get the angle right. Yeah, you can see Courtney Brosnan, she's unsure whether to come or not, she comes. And as you say, was it Basha got the shot off, it just hit the side net, and thankfully for Ireland, but um, that just shows the threat they have. I think we've yet to see them kind of make those runs in behind. But she just doesn't get her angles right, thankfully, as I said, for Ireland, they hit the side net. I think that counts as a let off. Yeah, I think it just shows that we have to really make sure we're, sh we're switched on. As I said, it's been a, a positive start from Ireland. But when you're playing against top quality side like this, you have to be switched on the whole game, just not give them any chances to get in. Caruso will attempt to put pressure on the defence. It's uh, with Lacrar. She's put it out. It's an Irish throw. It's good pressure again from Caruso. Well, remarkable to think that uh, this is only his third game in charge. A couple of friendlies since he took over at the end of March. Colombia and Canada, both victories. Much changed teams uh, for the two games as he assessed the personnel at his disposal. But this is more like a, a French European Championship team or World Cup team that we're watching tonight. And very near to what I'd imagine he'll put in. They open up against Jamaica in the World Cup. Yeah, you'd like to think so. Wouldn't you? He'd want to have a look at his, his starting 11 properly and. Not too dissimilar to what Vera will do if he has to make some tweaks or changes along the way before that first game. But as you say, an unusual one for him coming in. Not so many games before the World Cup with everything that went on with uh, the previous manager. Caruso couldn't make it stick. It's Kashawi, Le Sommer. And that was Little John getting it away. And Katie McCabe with Lacrar. And then McCabe goes down, and the referee says, all fair. And Marisha Little John with the challenge, and the late whistle gives the free kick to Ireland. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's for the, the foul on, on McCabe, or was it a late one on Marisha Little John? But good cover again from Marisha Little John. You can see uh, Katie McCabe trying to hold on to the ball, but you know, we spoke about the energy and, and how quickly they will get on you, and she loses the ball, and good cover from Marisha Little John again. A great thumping challenge. Yes. From a lady from Scotland who qualifies through her Ulster connections. Yeah, Rush has been unlucky as well with injuries over the last couple of years, but a player really has a lot of quality in there. I think she, she deserves to be at the World Cup. Basha. Kashri. Gioro. It's 
Toletti. Stiani. Difficult to shift. That's Basha. And again. Found a slip on through for Kashawi. Kashawi and Louise Quinn there with a saving tackle. The spin kept it in play. Heather Payne bundled off it, forced to put it out of play. And uh, Louise Quinn needs some attention after uh, taking a, a painful knock on the, the Adam's apple, I think it looked yeah. like. Yeah, it's good cover as well from the Louise, and she does well to read the danger and get across. I think that's where the French can be dangerous, to get in between the lines is something that I think the Irish should be trying to avoid, but you can see as it comes through here, I think she just catches into the player and gets it. Does he get hit with the ball or has it come off? I'm not sure what's happened there, but she's holding her neck, so... It's an unusual one, hopefully she's okay. But again, you can see the French, they are dangerous when they find those little gaps in between the lines, so Ireland really have to make sure they try and get back and cover. It's a good reaction from the Louise Quinn. France still with an attacking possibility, Toletti. And again, they've gone backwards, Cascarina to try and open up the Irish cover. Renard. Heather Payne there in the way. Denise O'Sullivan, smart turn, and again. And off to Little John. Shiva's up ahead. And that's another... They clearly have identified this left-back position as uh, as one that they can exploit. Yeah, I think we've seen Karchoy get forward quite a bit as well, so she does tend to leave that little bit of space. You can see every time they get it, as you say, they're looking out here for Heather Payne getting forward. But again, it's frustration from the, the French team. You can see Renard gets on the ball. She's trying to get the ball forward quickly and, and gives it away unnecessarily but I think Ireland have this French team frustrated Lacroix back with Renard again Lacroix this is Diani very deep for her yeah, she's another one we haven't seen enough, enough of from the French point of view you know she's a player who I mentioned before the game full of talent scores some amazing goals really good in the ball we haven't really seen much from her either Pass hit in frustration. We're going to see a, a change here. Uh, Katie McCabe is going to go off, and Izzy Atkinson is going to make her entrance. I'd say this is precaution, nothing more. Yeah, let's hope so. I think, um, judging from what Katie done after that first knock, she was able to run around and do a little bit. So, hopefully, as we say, it is just precaution. And I think it's the right decision as well. There's no point in taking any unnecessary risks, especially with a player of uh, Katie McCabe's quality. So, uh, Katie McCabe. We'll give the uh, captain's armband away. And Izzy Atkinson will come on. Denise O'Sullivan going to lead the team, as she did on her 100th cap, which was just uh, a couple of matches ago. So a great ovation for Katie McCabe as she goes off. And is replaced by Izzy Atkinson, West Ham United, making her sixth international appearance. Turns 22 in Australia. They'll be there for the World Cup. On yeah. the, the Monday before the first game, she'll turn 22. Yeah, Izzy Atkinson is a, an exciting prospect. We've seen her against Zambia. I think she showed exactly what she can do going forward. And defensively, tactically, was where Vera was questioning her a little bit, but I think she has shown improvements in those areas too. So, exciting player to look at. An opportunity here, maybe. <laughs> Heather Payne taking no chances. Yeah, you can see Courtney Brosnan's coming out there, but as you say, Heather Payne wants to get rid of it. But what a game for Izzy Atkinson to come on in here against a, a really, really good French side. As I said, she was a player who, who probably wasn't looking like getting into the World Cup. She was a late call-up um, coming in before that Zambia game. And she, as I said, in that game proved herself well enough to be able to get the nod for the squad yeah. and head to Australia. And Shiva battling with Renard. Uh, all the experience there of all those internationals. 144 before tonight. Oh, given away. And this is Carusa. Shiva pulls back. Carusa attempting the cross has forced the corner. It's really good play from Shiva. You can see she's pacey. She she put the fear into the defence there. The keeper's done really well to try and go the other way. But again, Carusa getting up with the play and really putting pressure on. It's been really good by Ireland. I thought before the game, maybe they might show them too much respect, but they really have put it to France here. So a second corner of the match, and they've both been to Ireland. And it's Megan Connolly who's gone forward to take this in the absence of Katie McCabe. 
And as expected, four and five, Fahi and Quinn. Connolly's corner coming now. And goalkeeper could only fist it. Just fizzed past Little John. But France with everybody back. Heather Payne can retrieve for Ireland. It's fairly clever. But uh, Kashawi had the pace. Cascarino put under pressure by O'Sullivan. Louise Quinn to beat Le Sommer to it. And now Farrelly. Farrelly looking for Carusa and Renard has put it out in another corner. Scored again, good high pressure from the Irish team, not letting the French team out. Good delivery from Megan uh, Connolly on that first corner as well, so hoping she can get another good delivery in here. Cost the keeper a little bit of trouble. So Connolly trots forward again. Quinn and Fahi go into the box. Instructions barked by the goalkeeper. Petro Mania and Connolly to take the corner. Hanging there dangerously. Goalkeeper under pressure again. Farrelly couldn't quite get there. Diani tried to bring it away. Farrelly with a challenge. And Arna get back into position as France will have a throw to take. Yeah, it's a, another good delivery, a little bit more floaty, floaty like Katie's one previously, but it's in, in on top of the keeper again. Caruso trying to make a nuisance of herself. And Renard hurrying back to prevent the corner. Missed kick by Farrelly. And Farrelly's challenge puts it out, and it's a throw to France. again making a nuisance of herself a bit of a tangle there the referee has not blown the whistle but the throw is to France 10 minutes to half time and out off O'Sullivan he'd wonder from a French point of view will Renard look at maybe making some changes will he change the formation we know when he was with Saudi Arabia he changed he wasn't sure he had changed in his formation if it wasn't working yeah, the 4-3-3 has been fr traditionally France's method, and that's what they've started with here, but it hasn't worked for them so far. But here they come again, Kachaoui. A little heavy touch from Toletti, and the chance was gone. It's just not quite quick for the or clicking for the French, is it? You can see what they're trying to do there. It's good intricate play. We mentioned the technical players that they have, but just too heavy of a ball through. It's worth considering that uh, this far, Courtney Brosnan has been, uh, apart from that uh, moment she was caught outside her area, it's been a quiet night for her. Yeah, definitely. I think, as I said, we, we haven't really seen much from Les Omer or Diani, who really are their goal scorer and threats, you know. Obviously, Gayoro has been on the ball a little bit in midfield, but hasn't really got forward in the, into those dangerous areas too much. And thankfully, from an Irish point of view, we have yet to see Courtney Brosnan um, brought into action at all. O'Sullivan putting the pressure on and forcing Gayoro back. And Fahi just couldn't rise high enough, but Farrelly's there. Fahi away to pain. Fahi forward once more. Farrelly. And it's pain. Gayoro bringing some order to it. Toletti. Shall we? And off to Renau. It's Carusa and uh, Shiva together making a use of themselves. Farrelly considering the pass. Shiva's made the run. Farrelly going the other way towards Carusa, finding only Renau. 
Yeah, you can see she's trying to size up her options there. She probably could keep on dribbling a little bit and possibly get a shot off there, but she's tried to find the, the pair behind Renard, which is probably not going to be the easiest thing to do. Fahi took that one full in the face. But Fahi's all right again, uh, cutting back to her position after uh, full the quarter full of the face. Renard looking for Le Sommer. It's, it's Atkinson who got in the way now. Sullivan, Shiva running willingly ahead again. Atkinson's on the wing. That's for Atkinson. Atkinson's cross. Keeper there. Good take. Yes, yeah, good running forward from Atkinson. I said before, we know what she's like going forward. She's a powerful, um, high-energy player. She's, she likes to get forward and try to get into those positions. We've seen her against Zambia. A couple of times getting forward well. It's a good delivery into a dangerous area, but the keepers dealt with it well. Kioru. Patience, the watchword for France once again. Lacra and Diani. Basha, that ball was out of play. Looked like it, didn't it? Looked like it was out of play. Assistance, give it the goal kick. We got there in the end. <laughs> yeah, she just overrun it, didn't she? You can see she's trying to get a, the ball out of her feet to get across into the box, but she just overrun it. Five minutes or so to half time. So she has to be happy with the way the first half has gone. Yeah, definitely. I think Garland have started and, and gone through this first half in a really good way. They've shown positivity going forward and defensively they've been solid when needed. It's been a, a really good first half from Ireland. It's Heather Payne for Sinead Farrelly. Well, that's for Heather Payne. Maybe the option was inside to Denise O'Sullivan. It just yeah, all was a little too tight there. Yeah, you can see Nia Fahey as well, so he can come back through me and I can switch the play as well. It's just she's looking for that forward pass, which I know Vera does in, in, encourage as well. So just not that didn't get it right that time. Fahey back in defensive mode, dispossessing Dali. Toletti, Kashawi. Paletti taking a little bit of a kick out there at Caruso. You can see the frustration in this French team. Le Sommer coming deep to get herself involved. It'd be an interesting stat how many touches she's had in this first half. French centre forward. Shiva, lovely layoff to Atkinson. And back again to Connolly. Trying to pick out O'Sullivan. Well, Denise O'Sullivan solved the problem, but it's not quite over yet. The shot there was from Basha, and it's Shiva trying to find Carusa. But uh, Petro Magnan can come and take control. Carusa, Shiva not combining on this occasion. Yeah, I think Ireland just nearly putting themselves into trouble there, trying to keep the ball, trying to do the right things with just Megan Connolly and uh, ball inside. You hadn't got many other options to be fair to her, but uh, it's well dealt with again by Rusha Little John just covering the ground well. Lacrar. Now this has come all the way across to Basha. And rolled on for Kashawi. Brosnan thought about coming. But the defence did its job. And O'Sullivan has played a clever ball towards Carusa. And give the Irish defence time to get its shape back again. Basha. For Renard. And Little John let that one drop, wanted Brosnan to come. Brosnan stood her ground and has sent it towards Shiva. That's a 
another overhead pass and no trouble to Brosnan. Yeah, I think France have yet to really come alive down that right-hand side. I think any time they have come forward and, and look like maybe making something happen, it's been through Basha and Kashwai down this left-hand side. But um, we've yet to see Diani get on the ball. Or Lacroix really hasn't got forward too well down that right-hand side, so I'm sure that'll be something they're looking to change in the second half. That was an awkward one. <laughs> but uh, she dealt with it well. Grunar once more. Cascarino and now Kashawi. Keoro and Cascarino. Diani got the better of Connolly. Diani side net. Goal kick. Yeah, that's more like it from Diani. I think she's complaining about maybe getting a little bit of a tug back from Megan Connolly. You can see she lifts it over her head going in here, and you can see Megan Connolly doing her best to get back at her. Possibly has a case there, but it's much better from Diani, as I said. I've, I feel like I've hyped her up before the game as, a, as one of their target players or one of their, their really good players, and she's yet to really come alive in this game. Interesting about her, her contract's up at Paris Saint-Germain, she's no club at the moment, but she's going to the World Cup. Yeah, it's a similar situation for a few of the Irish girls, isn't there? It's a strange one, you, you don't really see that in the, in the men's game, really, do you? It's more so maybe players going over and having good tournaments and getting picked up from teams, but it's uh, usually when they're with clubs before going. Good idea, just a little bit overhit. Kashawi, Gayoro, Rana, Dali, looking for the run of Lacroix. She's got the better of Atkinson, Lacroix, looking for Lazabe. Oh, it's in. And uh, Ireland disappointed with that, and well, they might be. That was a touch of good fortune for France to take the lead. Atkinson caught on the outside by Lacroix, and when the ball came into the middle, Ireland didn't deal with it. And this was the outcome. Have to see it again here. I thought possibly when it came back in, she could be in an offside position. Now it does come off the Irish defender, but it'd be interesting to see it again here, George. No, it's been played to her yep. by the Irish player, hasn't it? That's unfortunate. I think commentators curse for myself. I said you haven't seen much down that right-hand side, but it's the first time Lecrae has got forward. She just got the better of Atkinson. And when Little John tried to clear her lines, it was really put on a plate for her and no chance for Brosnan. It was actually Heather Payne who tried to clear her lines. Not too much Brosnan could do about that. And it's Lacroix. Uh, on only her third appearance for France, who scores her first goal for the country. And uh, against the run of play, you'd have to say, the world-ranked number five team have taken the lead. Yeah, it's an unfortunate finish to this half of football. As I said, Ireland definitely been the better team. But again, it's just those moments um, you have to be aware of all the time. And Heather Payne, you can see she's just trying to clear the danger and just very unlucky that it's fallen straight to Lacroix. Skiro. Still Guerrero, now Le Sommer, Dali, and the goal scorer, Lacroix. Cascarino under pressure from Farrelly. Isn't it Jack Charlton who said full backs are the most important players of the pitch because they can change things? to such an extent, and Lacroix did, by making the ground, creating the opportunity, and then being in the right place at the right time to finish it. Yeah, and as I mentioned, I think Karshwai uh, over this left-hand side has been very effective, um, but Lacroix, as I mentioned, didn't really get forward too much. I'm sure she's been encouraged to, um, but yeah, just might see an extra little pep in the step of the French here now, getting that 1-0 lead going into half-time. Brosnan out for this one, and that'll be a throw to France. 
Le Sommer. Pasha. Le Sommer. Kachawi. Toletti. Le Sommer's in. Oh, there is the class. An anonymous first half is crowned with a typical goal. Yeah, we mentioned her, didn't we? We said she doesn't need much of a chance to score a goal. She just found herself in a really good position, and what a finish that is. It's, it's the first time they've come through the middle. Little intricate passes in through the centre of the fence, and as I said, she finds herself in a little bit of space, and she's a type of player that can carve something out of nothing, and she's finished it superbly well. Nothing Drosden could do about the perfectly placed shot by Eugenie Le Sommer. That is... Uh, the player we said scored an international goal every other game. Yeah, it's better as well from Taletti. You can see looking to try and find that ball in the feet of Dali, and she gets turns, just finds that little bit of space to be able to put the lesson more through, and it's a great finish, really is. As I said, Ireland very unfortunate to find themselves in this position. Really have to get themselves together now going into the second half and see what we can do. Well, it's a goal number 89 for Le Sommer. that's some record. Yeah, and as I said, it's not it's not easy, you know, being a player. She's been up there for the, la the, the whole half, not really had too much to do, hasn't got much of the ball, and she's she's finished it well when called upon. So two goals effectively in stoppage time, 45th minute and then the 49th minute, and it's 2-0 uh, to France. The right back, Lacroix, the centre forward, Le Sommer, half time in Tala, disappointingly. Ireland nil, France 2. Covering all 64 matches of the World Cup across the various RTE platforms and we'll begin with our preview programme on Wednesday the 19th of July at 8 o'clock. And here are the broadcast details for Ireland's group fixtures beginning against Australia and Sydney on Thursday the 20th of July, 11am kickoff. Then against Canada from Perth on Wednesday the 26th of July, 1 o'clock start Irish time for that one. And we conclude our group stage against Nigeria and Brisbane on Monday the 31st of July with an 11 o'clock start. Teams are back out, the second half is about to get underway. We can now return to George and Stephanie on commentary. Thank you, Peter. Yes, we're ready to go. The wind has not abated. There's a little rain in the air. Wind will favour France in the second half. And, of course, we know that uh, we're disappointed at what happened in additional time at the end of the first. Yeah, it's unfortunate, isn't it? I think we mentioned the frustration they were causing the French team and how they approached the game. Just those two moments where it costs us, you know, I think, you know, we mentioned the quality that France have, um, but a really good performance in that first half, and to go in 2-0 down is, is very disappointing, so hopefully Arlen can pull back here now and, and really have a go of it in the second half. Well, we were making the point about uh, Le Sommer, Eugenie Le Sommer, and uh, the fact that she scores every other game. <laughs> well, she scored in Renard, Eri Renard's first game, against Colombia. She didn't score against Canada, and now she scored here. Yeah, and again, she's a top player, and I think we mentioned her a few times on how she hadn't got into the game, but we also touched on the fact that she doesn't really need too much to be able to get something out of nothing, and it was a great finish, and I said it's the first bit of play they had where they actually got through the middle too, but again, she really showed her quality with that finish. And she will be one to watch, of course, uh, when the World Cup gets underway, which it does uh, in two weeks' time. It has to imagine that Renard is a little bit happier now going in at 2-0. I'm sure he had some words to say as well because it, it wasn't really a very good performance, but those two goals near the end kind of put a little bit of a gloss on their first half performance. Shiva making a touch there. And now it's with Lacrar. And uh, no way up the right for Diani. Goal kick Ireland. Taking a little bit of buzz out of the crowd as well, I think. I need a, a moment or two to get back into the second half. Yeah, I think he just get the ball forward again. I think Karen touched on at half time. Caruso was excellent in that first half. She really was uh, making the French defenders work hard so we can get the ball up to her and really try to create something off her and just give this crowd something to cheer about again. I'm sure they'll get going again and get behind the team. The one there by Dali. Gayoro challenged by O'Sullivan, supported by Toletti. And off it goes to Kashawi. There, the crowd has uh, found its voice again. Basha it's, uh, broken up, and Farrelly has it. Turned into trouble there. And an opportunity here. Dali just couldn't 
get wound up on it, and that's come to O'Sullivan. And Shiva's made the break. Ahead of her is Carusa. Shiva looking for Carusa through the middle, and Renard is there, taking no chances. That'll be an Irish throw. Yeah, it's positive and it's well read by Renard. You can see Caruso is trying to find the space to try and run into, but she's she's read it really well and covered the danger. It's go for a play with Shiva trying to find her in behind. Ireland's throw. Farrelly, little flick inside, Carusa, O'Sullivan. No foul on the edge of the area, referee saw that as a, a genuine coming together with nobody to blame. Louise Quinn away to near Fahi. O'Sullivan. Notice how quick the French were to close her down there. Well know the danger she could pose in that situation. Yeah, they've been very quick to get around Denise O'Sullivan every time she's got on the ball, I think. Any opposition playing the Irish team will know the threat that she poses in those positions, so it's no surprise to me that they're on her quickly every time the ball comes to her feet. It's Cascarino, steer it away to Petro Magnan. Right now. Lacrar. Shiva did her job. Ball is out for a French throw. In fact, it's been awarded to Ireland. It's looking for Caruso. Wendy Renard got there with the, the head. It's now Lacrar. Atkinson getting rid of it. And Renard recovering from the heavy touch. Away to Karchaoui. Farrelly breaking it up. Heather Payne's pass going astray. Gaoro back to Cascarino. Toletti swiftly away to Renard. That is for Basha. Kashawi and Le Sommer in round the back and Brosnan makes the save solid goalkeeping by Courtney Brosnan yeah she does well there doesn't she to read the danger comes out and just stops Le Sommer being able to get any sort of contact on the ball brave goalkeeping very effective goalkeeping too Now, Toletti on, and now Gioro. Economy of movement, beautiful touch for Basha. Basha's cross. Diani couldn't quite make the contact. Irish throw. Atkinson waits for uh, some movement. Came from Little John. Out for an Irish throw. Yeah, I think those two goals just before half time have uh, changed the way of the game, really. I think it's taken the wind out of Ireland's sails. See Fr France a little bit more composed in the ball. Oh, here's Le Sommer again. Let's find the side net this time. But they put the pressure on there. Reached the Little John. Had no answer and. Uh, the Samir was in once more. That's on target, that's in, there's such power in the shot. Yeah, she finds those little gaps in behind the defence so well, doesn't she? She opts to go for the forward post instead of hitting it across, as you say, if it's on target, it's a it's a great strike, but just hits the side and in. Fahi committed the foul, bringing down Gioro. 
Nearly in a similar situation the first half, Cascarina got herself a yellow card for a similar challenge. But um, no card for Niamh Fahey. Yeah, Giora does really well, doesn't she, just to pull away from her, but Fahey doesn't want to let her get in on goal, so she has to, has to commit the foul. Just need to deal with this now. Basha and Dali. And it's Dali who takes it, invitingly in there, headed away by Payne. And Farrelly with the secondary clearance. And Atkinson there, adding weight to the challenge. So just deceived by the spin of the ball. She tries to check back, doesn't she? Afrena, she looks forward and Caruso is, is not really in the centre forward position, so it's a difficult one for her. She tries to keep possession of the ball, but unfortunately goes out off her. There now, Cascarino and Karashvi. We're now looking for Lacara. I think that with a little bit of wind assistance, uh, the Irish defence survived that long ball from Wendy Renau. Gayoro making use of herself. Toletti. We're back with Dali. And Brosnan swiftly off her line. And out to Shiva. That was not the pass she intended to play, obviously. Yeah, it's disappointing, isn't it? It's just a, a short pass out to Atkinson to try and keep possession of the ball here. Ireland just can't keep a hold of it at the moment. So a different type of game now coming into the second half with how it did finish in the first, but we need to get ourselves back into this game and try to be a little bit more composed on the ball. Yeah, we just had a look at Vera Powell there. Uh, <laughs> frustration edged all over her face and just having another look at her, she's urging them, get forward, get out of the half, do what you were doing in the first half. Yeah, it's just it's difficult, as I said. You can see France really finding their rhythm now as well, and they know with the two-goal lead, they have a little bit more, yeah, a little bit more comfort on the ball, as I said. And it's be interesting to see will Vera make a couple of changes. What can we do to try and get this game back on side and try and get ourselves into it a little bit? It's just the, there is frustration clearly because the passes there was Shiva, then there was Farley. They just weren't quite right. Uh, the weight of the passes. Yeah, it's just concentration, isn't it? It's, it's those little moments, as we mentioned before, you have to be alert in these games. That teams like France, obviously when we go to the World Cup, you're playing against top quality sides, that they'll hurt you if you, if you make little mistakes like that. And as I said, Ireland just need to keep a hold of the ball and, and really try to push themselves up the pitch here and get back into the game. The little John winning it back. A free kick. Heather Payne brought down. Ireland's free kick. Yeah, you can see the Nisa Sullivan having a word with the referee. I think we mentioned before the game that we thought France would, would press high. They probably didn't get a chance to do it that well in the first half, but now you can start to see them there. They're not giving Ireland any time on the ball. They're pressing in high in attacking areas and, and really trying to get at that. Particularly down that left hand side on, on Heather Payne. So they're really getting at her down that left hand side and not giving them a moment on the ball. Opportunity here for Payne, and that was for Shiva, but uh, the pass just went behind her. Lacrar, Connolly stepping in. Now it's Little John Connolly. And Fahey offered herself. She's done well there, Megan Connolly as well. You can see she just holds her defender off. She doesn't rush into anything. Tries to keep a hold of the ball. All came back rather quickly at them, and it's uh, gone out for an Irish throw. No way through for Payne. O'Sullivan knocking it forward. Carusa battling hard without success, and eventually the free kick's awarded. Cascarino brought down. Uh, 
And did he so Sullivan's uh, foot uh, left there? And did what it was intended to do, which was stop Cascarino in her tracks. One outside Megan Connolly, who should be able to deal with this. But again, a pass that went astray. Throw from Lacar. Le Sommer. That's Little John winning it back. Atkinson losing out to Lacroix. Now Le Sommer. Trying to work a shooting opportunity. Basha didn't quite work out. It's Kashawi. And now Gioro. And it's Louise Quinn who thumps it clear. Carusa. Losing out to Cascarino. Ball kept in play. Farrelly there. Ball still in play and eventually thumped against Carusa. And Fahi retrieves it. And Brosnan. And Quinn and Fahi. And in fact, he didn't trust herself on her left foot there and uh, decided yeah. to turn to make sure she got it away. I think you can see, Fahi, it's, it's the right idea from Courtney Brosnan there, but Ireland just not able to get out of her own half there. I think she needs to just go along and get us up the pitch. Trying to be a little bit too clever on the ball. Glacrar. And that was Diani. Renau, Toletti. And then Cascarino. Karshawi. Oh, Louise Quinn with a firm header away. And Farrelly. But couldn't get it past the opponent. Still France come again. Gioro. The back with Toletti. And off to Lacrar. And that's out of Atkinson for a corner to France, which is actually their first corner of the game. Yeah, you can hear the Irish defence screaming to get out, get up the pitch. You just can't get out at the moment. Ireland are getting pinned back by this French side who are pressing really high and not giving them a chance to get that ball forward to Caruso like they were in the first half. So it's France's turn now to mass inside the opposition penalty area. It's Kenza Dali will take the corner kick. Dali's corner. Oh, in like a rocket. And it's Lacra once again, the fullback. A second goal for the new right back, Maël Lacra. And France lead by three. Yeah, it's not where we're used to see him from Ireland, is it? We don't usually. Can see goals from uh, from set pieces, but she just makes her way through there and gets free. And see Louise Quinn tries to come out, but just gets because goes over her head. It's disappointing from Ireland, as I said. The second half has started a little bit flat. Difficult game, I suppose, coming back after the way that first half finished. But need to see a little bit more from the Irish team here now. We said we caused some uh, frustration in the first half, but it's it's a reaction now after going two two goals down and to go three against the good France team. It's uh, it's a difficult way back for them, but we need to see a little bit more in a reaction now here from this team. Yeah, when you see that goal go in, it's a standing header. She didn't even have to get off the ground to meet the header. It's a, a soft one to give away. It's the second goal for uh, the fullback, Maël Lacra. And as that was happening, so with two changes of the French team, Diani has gone off to be replaced by Clara Matteo. Forward, making her fifth appearance for the team. And also off is Kenza Dali, who took the corner that led to the third goal. And she is replaced by Elisa de Almeidi, Paris Saint-Germain player, making her fourth appearance for the team. Yeah, we by Atkinson. We mentioned before the break, and um, before the two goals went in, we see changes. But I think these changes now are, are probably giving Renard a chance to look at other players as well. Which, I suppose, the way the first half went, you, you probably wouldn't have thought it would go that way. But this French team are really starting to show their quality now, and 
They're getting into their groove, which is worrying for Ireland. Yes, and that's enabled them to send on two, uh, two fringe players. And it's enabled them to uh, change the shape a little bit. De Almeida has gone into uh, centre-back alongside Renard. Cascarino has gone to the left side of the defensive unit. And the, uh, the new attacker, Matteo, is on the right wing. Katie McCabe, meanwhile, can only watch on as uh, the match seems to be drifting away from Ireland at this point. That third goal coming right on the hour. Caruso trying to put the pressure on Renau. It's Heather Payne. And Farrelly looking for the run of O'Sullivan. De Almeida has uh, taken it out of the danger zone. Gayoro challenged by Fahi. Farrelly there, now O'Sullivan. And Farrelly once more, looking more promising, played in behind Shiva, though. And this is Matteo. Toletti now sending Basha away. This is Le Sommer, Louise Quinn with her. And there is the experience of years and years of defending of Louise Quinn to get the better of Le Sommer. I think she's she's arguing that it's come off less some air as well and it's not a corner kick but it's better from Ireland there again higher up the pitch Denise O'Sullivan where tenacity getting forward and keeping the ball but it's just those moments where they're not failing to show a little bit of quality and composure to try and find that final pass Katie McCabe in the stand for the second half watching on cutting a, a rather frustrated figure but uh, if there is an injury niggle it's best that it's uh, not worsened in this game with the World Cup the opening game just two weeks away today. Yeah, definitely. I think we're hearing it's a rolled ankle and they're not too concerned, but definitely it's not a, a risk you want to take with Katie McCabe. She's going to be a big part of this squad going over to Australia. So the most important thing is that she's, she's fit and well and able to compete in those games. Little John on the ball, assisted by Fahey. And Little John with the clearance and O'Sullivan. That's a, a free kick. The challenge by Toletti. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight's attendance is a new women's national team record attendance of 7,633. Thank you very much for your amazing support this evening. Well, there you are. Uh, the send off attracting a record attendance for an Irish women's international at home of 7,633. Yeah, it's a brilliant crowd, isn't it? It's great to see as well because we've seen in the past where you're here, it's going to be sold out and people don't turn up and it just leaves those empty seats so it's great to see so many people here tonight to give the Irish girls a send off it's just a pity the way the game is going at the moment Atkinson getting the better of De Almeida free kick awarded in her favour it's interesting to see a few Irish subs getting ready there at the moment. I think it's needed. I think Ireland needs something, needed a little bit of an injection of energy. Just something, as we mentioned before, to get the crowd going. Claire O'Reardon, Lily Ag, and Anya Goldman, the three, they were going to be making their entrance. But not just yet. This free kick to come from Megan Connolly. They're lined up, ready to attack. It's Connolly's free kick. And went Farrelly, but uh, the French have defended it well. Kashawi. Cascarino on the overlap. Oh, Brosnan caught there. But it's gone harmlessly wide in the end. Threat provided by Matteo, the new player. Yeah, it's good play from Les Omer, dropping in and getting on the ball, and she finds the player out wide. Just thankfully from an Irish point of view, it's gone wide of the goal, but again, coming down that left-hand side, I, I would imagine these players coming in are coming in to 
to relieve that right hand side because there has been a lot of uh, French play coming down there. On your Gorman and Clara Reardon coming on. So three substitutions about to be made by Ireland, but first Courtney, Courtney Brosnan's goal kick. Oh, straight there to Basha, and this is wide to Cascarino. Pain clearing, Shiva. Only Carusa up. Renard is there. Farrelly challenging. Oh, back then with De Almeida. And now it's Toletti. Gayoro. De Almeida. Quinn in with the challenge. Decisive. Now it's O'Sullivan. Fahi. Payne. And out. The throw will be to France. And those Irish substitutions uh, can now be made. So Claire O'Reardon comes on for Neil Fahi. And uh, the second substitution is uh, Ruisha Littlejohn being replaced by Lily Ag. And the final substitution sees the introduction of Anya O'Gorman for Heather Payne. And she's been replaced by number 13, Anya O'Gorman. Yeah, as we mentioned, as we said before, George, a lot of the attacking uh, from that France team has been coming down that right-hand side. Neil Fahey obviously just coming back from injury. Just good to get a few minutes under her belt here. Clara Reardon, as we've seen against Zambia, proved that she deserves an opportunity. So happy to see her getting a chance here. But I think it is just a case of getting fresh bodies on down that right-hand or that left-hand side for France because they have caused us trouble down that, down that side. Cascarina will take the throw. Well, the game has certainly turned uh, since half time. The, the statistic now is that France have enjoyed 71% of the possession uh, and significantly two, uh, three attempts on goal, three goals. Ireland have yet to uh, hit the target with a single attempt. Yeah, and which uh, sorry to cut across you, Stephanie. It's a uh, given the the shape of the selection for the World Cup. That's a worry, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. And I think we, we've said it already a few times this half. It's just been a difficult start to the second half. As we haven't been able to get out of our half really, like in terms of how we played in that first half, getting the ball up to Caruso. We we look promising at times, but. The game has really turned its head and it's it's, it's a difficult uh, second half for this team and as much as I'd like to see us go for a goal, I think it's about getting ourselves in and, and really kind of trying to stay solid before the end of the game. We don't want to see us leaking too many goals and um, just try and keep it a little bit more settled and as I said, we don't want to see France getting any more goals in this game. It's, it's not the way we want to go to Australia. We don't want to leave here on the end of a hiding, you know. Two goals in stoppage time at the end of the first half followed by a goal right on the hour and uh, France in control. That was Kashawi and she's involved again but the ball has gone out for a goal kick. France will make another change shortly. So the referee happy for Courtney Brosnan to take her goal kick. I 
That's a good play from Caruso. She gets herself in in front of it there. She's worked really hard for the team tonight. As we mentioned before, she hasn't got too much of the ball in this second half, but she's still working really hard across that top line, trying to win free kicks and try and get the ball for her team. Connolly intercepting. O'Sullivan. And off to O'Reardon. And Onya O'Gorman. Towards Carusa. Renau won it. Ag trying to get onto it, but it's come to Gioro. It's away to Lacrar. Does she remember her visit to Dublin? Third time to play for France and the first time to score, and she gets two. Yeah, it's not been a bad night for her, has it? As we, we mentioned she didn't get forward too much in the first half, but she's she's got that goal towards the end of the first half, and she got that header as well, so she's had a good night. Louise Quinn away, and that's gone for another corner to France. Now it uh, is another stat that tells its own story. Ireland had three in the first half, France have had three in the second. Basha making a way to, to take this. Are two more substitutes coming for France. So first of all, it's Naomi Theller who plays for Real Madrid. The striker coming on in place of Le Sommer. And then we'll get a chance to see a Chelsea player. Yves Perissé will be the second substitution to come on. And it's the goal scorer who goes off to let Perissé make her entrance. Experienced player, 48th appearance for France here's the corner over Quinn's head oh it's come all the way through Dalmeida blocked by Connolly another corner to France so Matteo to take this one but there's a problem in the Irish penalty area it's uh, is it Sinead Farrelly who's down Yep, so they need assistance uh, for Sinead Farrelly. One of the two who made a late surge to get herself a place in the World Cup squad, along with Marissa Shiva. But uh, the stage in the game, just in need of some assistance, which has arrived. Yeah, I think we can see a few subs for Ireland being readied already. It'd be interesting to see if she was going to be the one to be replaced. Or if they're going to have to make a quick change here to, to who's coming on. Amber Barrett and Abby Larkin. So Sinead Farrelly making her way off. Amber Barrett is on. And Matteo will take the corner. They've yet to make the substitution, haven't they? I think there's a little bit of confusion here. Farrelly has gone off. Barrett was coming on the pitch. There could be a change here, could there? So she's gone back uh, to put her tracksuit on, so it's not the substitution they were going to make. That's easy enough for Brosnan. Yes, it was going to be Amber Barrett, then Farrelly got hurt, so there's a change of mind on the touchline. Abby Larkin would be a player, I think, would play in that kind of more of attack of uh, position where Farrelly was playing, so I'm not sure if there was going to be a double substitution or... It looks like Abby Larkin's coming on. 
Well, they were both ready to come on, but now uh, Amber Barrett is putting on back her back, putting on her tracksuit again. Matteo for France, meanwhile, on for Feller. Dispossessed by Quinn. But, uh, there's a foul on Quinn. It's going to be a free kick to Ireland. Now we can we can have the change. No, not yet. You need to get this substitution made. There seems to be a, a degree of confusion for sure. Uh, the tracksuit's off again from Amber Barrett. <laughs> so she is going to come on, it would appear. And in fact, it looks rather like there could be three Irish substitutions. But uh, we'll concentrate on what's happening on the pitch for the moment as they sort out what's happening beside the pitch. Cascarino. On for Feller. Viliag in the way. Toletti. And now it's Feller once more. Attempted a 1 2, Louise Quinn doing the sensible thing and getting it well away. And Renard happy to direct it back goalwards. De Almeida. Toletti. Giro. De Almeida. For Cascarino. What a ball that was. Straight onto her toe. Cashawi. And now Basha. Uh, but. Uh, I think Liliag just caught a bit of an elbow there. Don't think there was any intention in it. She just kind of tried to get in her and caught. Caught the back of her elbow. So, Abby Larkin makes her entrance. In place of Sinead Farrelly, who had already gone off. Uh, the other substitution is the introduction of Diane Caldwell for Megan Connolly. And Megan is going to be in the place by number seven, Diane Caldwell. And uh, Amber Barrett has put her tracksuit on again. Poor Amber. <laughs> throw run out cascarino Larkin tracking her back, Larkin winning it back, and Cascarino bringing her down. It's a free kick to Ireland. Yeah, Abby Larkin doing her defensive duties there. We'd be more be looking to try and see her get her, see her getting forward and getting at those defenders. But the way this game has gone, I think it's going to be a game where she's going to have to to really work hard defensively and hopefully try and make an impact going forward. But not too much time to do it. Just uh, ten minutes plus whatever is going to be added. De Almeida, too much pace in that. Brosnan can gather in. Quite control it. Toletti, Caldwell up, Atkinson up, and fell out. And again, it's the redoubtable Louise Quinn with the challenge. And Shiva bringing it away, helped by Ag. 
Chaplin again. And that is going to be retrieved by Anya O'Gorman. O'Sullivan bringing it down, but Cascarino getting involved, winning it back for France. De Almeida. De Almeida once more off to Renard. Winning the free kick. And Onyo Gorman leaving it. And then re reassuming the responsibility. Another free kick. It's a good clip forward, back. isn't it? It's a good ball. It's a good, it's, touch him might go a bit short there and it could be cut out, but it's a good clip forward and it gets us up the pitch here. Hopefully get something into the box, George. Renard committing the foul. Ireland with the free kick and an opportunity of something here. Claire O'Reardon sizing up the opportunity. Louise Quinn is forward. Quinn in there to attack that ball. Oh, not happy enough to get it away anywhere. Toletti with the clearance. Irish throw. Back in again by Shiva, on by Quinn, but nobody far enough forward to take advantage. It's a good knockdown from Louise Quinn as well, I think. Everybody's looking to go to the ball. I think they just need to try and react to that ball off Louise Quinn, but unfortunately, he finds his way back into Manion's hand. <laughs> Renault Cascarino. Carusa. De Almeida. Perissé. Renard. Cascarino making the run forward. O'Gorman tracking it back. And that ends as an Irish throw. Another change for France. Kashawi, the left back, being replaced by Vivian Assayi, West Ham United. France's uh, fifth substitution. It's Amel Majri. For Georo. So that's all six subs used up by France. De Almeida couldn't get there. Then they want for Perusa to chase from Shiva. It didn't quite work out. She's asked a little bit too much of her there, hasn't she? I think Izzy Atkinson was trying to make a burst forward here, but Shiva had a ball play before she could see her. All the way back to uh, Petro Mania. Good overlapping by Cascarino and good support here too by Basha and a good save, Courtney Brosnan. So Stephanie, 
Sky player of the match time. Yeah, I think the, the second half has been quite disappointing. We, we talked about it a few times now, how that the end of the half went. But I think the first half, uh, Kira Caruso for me was, was really one of our main focal points. She really seemed to to play an integral part in how we were playing. And she worked really hard even throughout that second half where she wasn't getting much of the ball. So for me, I think it's got to be Kira Caruso. Um, I think she's shown that she's capable of playing that lone striker role up there. Just to think in the second half, we didn't use her as well as we did in the first. So Kira Caruso is my Sky player of the match. Ladies and gentlemen, your Sky Ireland player of the match for this evening's fixture is the Republic of Ireland's number 18, Kira Caruso. So confirmation on the uh, public address of the stadium that the Sky player of the match is Kira Caruso. Majdri. Rosman saw the danger and swiftly away to Anya O'Gorman. Cascarino back, but Larkin is there. Retrieved by Toletti. O'Gorman with an important interception. Larkin trying to get there. That was uh, an intervention by Caldwell that means it's safely back with the goalkeeper Courtney Brosnan. <laughs> Shiva. Almeida back to Peromagna. Uh, he's happy to see it go out of play. <laughs> Two footballs on the pitch. Really, I wasn't too sure which one to play. <laughs> I could see it coming back on as well, just as she turned there. But the referee does what she has to do, which is drop the ball. France have been in possession, so it's played there for Toletti. And uh, before additional minutes. Before the official has indicated, it will be the number four this minutes time the game is at four minutes. Renard. Denise O'Sullivan just uh, pulling over Maisri, who appeared to make rather more of it than Denise seemed to apply in the circumstances. Yellow card for her anyway, not that it's going to have much of an impact at this stage of the game. Yeah, I think it's just a bit of frustration from Denise, isn't it? She just pulls the ball back behind her and she knows she's not going to catch her, so she's pulled her back. Perisse inviting the run of Matteo. Brosnan saw the danger coming swiftly out of her goal. That's good cover from Brosnan, isn't she? She sees the danger from, from afar and gets herself out to clear the lines. Just a, a little bit disappointed with how the second half has gone, George, but I think we mentioned the opposition we play. It's a top opposition going into the games in, in Australia as well, so it's an important test for us. I think a couple of mistakes, and I say mistakes, but just learning how to bounce back when we do go down, I think is a big a learning curve for us, you know, going to Australia, but really good positives in that first half performance. And it's just about how we can get ourselves to just frustrate in the opposition to actually put them, the ball in the back of the net and, and causing trouble. Abby Larkin seeking Caruso in the middle, but the defender in the way. Yeah, the circumstances were unfortunate. The first half was nearly over and then two sucker punches really and uh, it was hard to come back from that yeah definitely and as you said that goal I think it's the little bit of luck you're looking for isn't it it's a goal and air eyes it's she's onside if you look back on it and the referee and the assistant have given it as offside 
I think if that goal is given, it could be a different first half and he could be going in at halftime in a different mindset. But it's those moments in games which decide them, unfortunately. And tonight, I think they've gone against Ireland. And I suppose, uh, looking on the bright side, wouldn't you rather it happened here than in Australia? Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. It's You're playing against a top opposition in France, and it's, it's because of the, it's that reason to, to see what can happen and, and the moments that happen in games and deal with them then going into the games against Australia, Canada and Nigeria. And look, to, as you say, it's better they happen tonight and don't happen over there, but we really need to get ourselves ready for those games. That's the most important thing. Renau. Majri chasing, throw to France. Head away by Caldwell. Majri once more. Caldwell's head again, and Brosnan has to go down to save. Corner. Yeah, I think Clara Reardon's not happy. I think she feels she got a bit of a push in the back there. Courtney Brosnan does well to react and keep it out with her near post there. Is it Anya Gorman who gets a little bit of a shove in the back here? But no, I don't think so. I think it's it's a fair header, isn't it? Yeah, and it's uh, it's brought France uh, a fifth corner, which they've uh, used a variation for. Well, that's the end of an evening uh, that was very educational, you'd have to say, but they're in the departure lounge now, and they know what they're going to be up against. Yeah, it's a comprehensive win in the end for France, but as I mentioned, we showed good start to the game. We really put it to the French in the first half, possibly the best, the better side, which is a strange thing to say when you go in at 2-0 down, but there's definitely positives in that first half performance, and as you say, there's lessons learned in that second half. It's just about trying to get ourselves ready now for Australia and really kind of focus on being able to turn the game around and maybe having that plan B, but not the standoff they wanted, but playing a top opposition like France, it's, it's a good preparation for the game. So the World Cup awaits. That's the last time we'll see this team in public before two weeks this morning when they go into action in Sydney against Australia. Tonight, they finish their preparations at home with a defeat. The final score, Republic of Ireland nil, France three. Thank you very much to George and Stephanie on commentary for us this evening here at Tala Stadium. So France have beaten the Republic of Ireland by three goals to nil. Uh, Stephanie made reference uh, there at the end, Karen, to lessons learned, uh, particularly I suppose from the second half and, and the concession of those two late goals in the first half. What were those lessons in your view? I think we need to, to find a way to claw our way into games where the opposition are stronger than us. We, we really conceded possession in the second half and the, the lines were just deeper. The distance between Carusa and the next line of defence in the first half was really, really good. It allowed our wing backs to get on and press their full backs. And yes, when the opposition are as good as France are, you do run out of legs, but we're at a point now where we have to be able to challenge these teams physically and fitness wise and if we're not that's a concern I think we are I just think we need to click into gear a little bit quicker be a bit braver on that um, really good first half lots of positives to take but certainly it is an eye-opener of the difference between top top teams and and where we're at and you know we're going to have to come up a level if we are going to compete against the Australians and the Canadians who I don't think are as good as the French but at the same time they still are a step above where we are. From your point of view, Rihanna, was it still a worthwhile exercise to be facing opposition of the calibre of France before a World Cup Odyssey begins? Yeah, definitely. Obviously, 